hello, hello. Welcome back. All right, are you ready for this? Rocky Road Slice, mate. Oh, I haven't made a slice in ages, and I haven't done no bacon ages. So yeah, fun and yum. <laughs> All right, I'll write the recipe below as always. So we need, I've got a 280 gram packet of marshmallows. So you need roughly around that. You need 250 grams of any sweet biscuit you've got at all. I just happen to have these in the cupboard, so that's what I'm using. I love using the Choc Ripple. Um, the Marie biscuit is pretty yummy as well. Like any sweet biscuit, just don't use shortbread. So if you go to use, say, Scotch Fingers, it's not going to come out right because it's shortbread. So you want a biscuit, okay? Now we want to chop up 125 grams of butter into a saucepan. We need one egg, we need some walnuts, some cocoa powder, we need one cup of glazed cherries, I've got a 150 gram packet here, and that's going to have to do, but I reckon that's pretty close to a cup. Caster sugar, coconut, we need some flaked almonds, not that many, but we need some flaked almonds. Now for the chocolate, we need 400 grams of chocolate, and you can use whatever chocolate you've got. So if it's Christmas time, sometimes I'll use a white chocolate. You can use milk chocolate or dark chocolate. So the first thing we need is a rectangle lamington tin, roughly around 19 to 29 centimetres. Put some baking paper in it. I've just put a little bit of butter in it first and the baking paper to keep it down. Make sure you put a bit on the side so it's easy to grab our slice and pull it out later. So have that ready first. So once we've chopped our 125 grams of butter and put it in our saucepan, we want to add one and a half tablespoons of cocoa powder and half a cup of caster sugar. Now we just want to sit that on the stove top and leave it there till we're ready for it. Now it's time to crush up our bickies. Now if you've got a food processor, you can break them all up and chuck them in there and let them beat them down to crumbs. Um, otherwise, you can get a freezer bag, put a few at a time with a rolling pin, or you can use a freezer bag and a hammer. Once we've done that, stick it in a big bowl and set it aside for a minute. Now we need half a cup of chopped walnuts. Once we've chopped our walnuts, in they go with our crushed bicky. And one cup of desiccated coconut. Now with a spoon or a fork, <laughs> give it a good, good mix through. Okie dokie, our crumb mix is ready to go now. So now what we want to do is get our one egg and whisk it up in a small bowl. Alright, once we've done that, we're ready to go. Now make sure your tin is ready to go. So the next thing we want to do is put our saucepan on a medium heat. We want to constantly stir, melt everything down. Once we've melted it all through, pour it on. <laughs> Add our whisked egg and now we want to mix it all through really well. Once we've mixed it all in and there's no dry ingredients left, we want to dump it into our tin. Just grab a spoon or a fork and just sort of even it out a little bit first. Then with our clean hands we want to push it all down. Once it's all pushed down we can get the back of the spoon and you can slide it along and just strain up all the edges. And then you can run it back and forth over it and just smoothen it out. Now we want to chuck it in the fridge for half an hour to set and then we can move on to the next step. So I'm just going to clean my kitchen and make a cuppa. Oh yeah. Okie dokie, half an hour is up. We want to get our base out and set it aside for a minute. Now we want to get a large bowl ready. I've got half a cup of almond flakes in a small bowl and if I need more I'll use more. And we've got our marshmallows. So what we want to do next is we want to cut our marshmallows in half. Once you cut them in half you want the sticky inside stick it onto the almonds, see how it sticks to the almonds and throw them in your big bowl and keep doing that with all of them. So what this does is it stops all the marshmallows from clumping up together and it spreads out the almonds evenly and you've got to try and not eat the marshmallows. <laughs> oh I love marshmallows. Okay so I only had to add a couple more of the almond flakes so I would say a heaped half a cup is perfect. Now we want to get all our cherries, grab out a separate bowl, cut them all in half and chuck them in the bowl. Let me tell you these Woolworths glazed cherries are the best cherries I think I've ever seen. Okay we're almost there folks. Alright now that we've done them we just set everything aside for a minute. Now the next thing we want to do is fill up the kettle and turn her on. We want to grab a decent size or I'll call it a medium saucepan. Once the kettle's boiled, I'm going to fill it up. You want to fill it up till it's not quite touching the bottom of whatever heat proof bowl you've got. So fill that up with the boiling water out the kettle. Sit that on top. 
You want to put 200 grams of whatever chocolate you've decided to use in there. Fill her up. Sit it on top. Move it aside for a sec. Now while that's melting, make sure we've got our marshmallow and almond ready to go. And a big spoon because we've got to do this pretty quickly. I've got my base of my slice sitting there ready to go as well. So it's all ready to go. Now our chalky's melted. We want to work really quick. So the first thing we want to do is grab a tea towel and wipe the bottom of our bowl because we don't want any water dripping in this. Then we want to pour it all in really quick. Once we've finished, just sit our bowl back on top of the water because we've got to melt down the other half of the chocolate in a minute. Once you've got as much as you can in there, we need to mix it up and get it all coated. Alright, once we've got it all coated, grab our slice base, pour it on and spread it all out. As quick as you can. This is why I take the base out just before we start doing everything else. So even though it's cold, it's not like refrigerated really cold for it to um, set before we get a chance to move it all around. Okay, once we've done enough to move it all around so we can't see any of the base, just sort of gently push down a little bit, just so it all sticks to the base. And what we want to do next is while it's still wet, the chocolate, is we want to get our cherries and drop them all over the top. Oh, are we getting excited yet or what? Okay, now what we want to do is grab our other 200 grams of chocolate and we want to stick that in and melt it down. Now you might have to redo the water and put more boiling water in there or it might be fine, all right? So 200 grams. Once we've melted our second lot down, you want to have the chocolate bowl nice and close to your slice. You just want to get big spoonfuls and you want to drizzle it all over. Oh yeah. Oh, once we've drizzled it all over, that is what it looks like. Now if you want to be really festive or if it's in the festive season, you can use coloured cherries. You don't have to just use red ones. Okay, now that we've done that, it probably will only take about half an hour to set, but I'll always leave it in there for a good hour. So bang it in the fridge exactly like that. Alrighty, an hour later. Okay, lift it out. And then you can chop it up into as big or as little as slices as you want. I like doing it in little ones. <laughs> so she says. You want to slice it up from the fridge because it's a lot better than if it's soft and melting, all right? Now, to store it, um, airtight container. If it's not hot where you live, you can leave it out. But if it's hot, store it in the fridge. So what I've done is I've sliced them into five bars and then I've wrapped every bar in glad wrap separate. Now you can bang them in the fridge, they last a week. If you want to get them out, you just get them out and chop them up however big or small you want. If you want to give them away, it's really easy to do that. Mate, do I need to say no more? <laughs> Mate, this one for your family. I absolutely love you for it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have yourselves a cracker of an arvo, and I'll see you soon. Toodles!